Hello. Thank you for joining me on Fourth Dimension Tarot. If you found me out of the 8 billion other opportunities to watch a video tonight, there might be something in this message for you. Spirit, what do you have to share? The Hermit, Strength Card, The Chariot. The Devil. Temperance. Death. The Hanged Man. So far, almost, I think all of these are major arcana cards. Somebody's going through a spiritual awakening right now. A significant one. Two of Swords. Okay. Just in your intuition. Ace of Swords. Truth. Honest conversation. Nine of Swords. Ten of Swords. Something's gonna die. I need one more card for the overall reading, please. Just need one. Thank you. Too many. One, please. Thank you. We have the Empress and the Emperor. Both showed up. <clears throat> and the Eight of Swords. Overall baby. These are the most beautiful cards. They are. Um, so, uh, right off the bat, like I said, and the Ace of Pentacles is the next card under uh, the Empress. I don't know if you can see that. They're gorgeous. So right off the bat, um, I get the sense that the uh, 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 whoever I'm reading for, there is a significant um, change. So when I say spiritual awakening, um, it's a change on the molecular part of a human being. It isn't, and I was kind of making reference to this on an earlier video that I did. Uh, you know, I can make a decision to go to and be healthier, make good choices, eating, buy a nice pair of tennis shoes, join a gym. I can make all the wishes in the world and then go to the gym, sit in my car, smoke a cigarette, drink a beer and eat some Oreos. Um, I have a great strategy and great plan, but, and I just don't have the will. I don't have, I'm missing the will. Uh, and the will, even if the will is there, I don't have the opportunity to change. You know, it, so when I see a divine intervention and a spiritual awakening, it is inside out. It's internally changing the molecular structure, like the desire to eat Oreos and have that beer and have that cigarette is resolved it's removed right it's recovery that's what i see in this reading so first on on deck is the hermit somebody sitting in hermit mode oh i wish you could see these it's so pretty let me see a little closer okay we get the gist so the hermit is somebody who it's kind of like turtle going in the shell they're sitting and thinking the hermit is really evaluating past mistakes, past relationships, where it went wrong, where do I want to go, um, what's happening. Temperance is, is the divine himself or herself or itself. Uh, the divine is showing up, having a conversation. This person is uh, pondering, tempering, you know, on the original or the, the other decks, they have um, like an angel standing over a river, you know, balancing the emotions from one cup to another. And temperance is like that. So where did I overgive? Where did I overindulge? Where did I um, take more than my share? Um, and temperance is evaluating, right? And balancing out everything we need. So in certain recovery programs, it's very similar. We took an honest moral inventory of ourselves, right? They the good and the bad, everything. And we come into balance. We even it out. We find we find balance and that's what he's doing. Or he, I, I get a sense it's guy, but 
who knows, but temperance is, is the divine showing up and showing this human, this energy here on the board, where they need to find balance, where they overgave. And it's not about addiction. I mean, it's not about the actual drinking. The drinking is a byproduct, the smoking and all that. It's a byproduct of not dealing with the stuff that we were doing. So if I overgive and overgive and overgive, I'm going to feel possibly like a victim. And if I take a victim stance, there is no equal give and take because I'm carrying it just like this coat. Every time I get into a relationship, I walk into a new relationship wearing the victim coat. And I'm gonna tell my next partner about how this one was a jackass and he hurt me and he this and he that and da 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 da. Okay, thanks for sharing. Talk to you later. I'll pay for the coffee. You know what I mean? And so it's not not healed. So what's happening here is you've got uh, this energy sitting in a hermit state, honestly evaluating where he's at fault, where he made the mistake, where he took ownership. He's taking ownership. He's really, for the first time, evaluating what's going on. Here's the strength card. Again, really pretty. I like that. But the strength is, is an internal strength. I have to really deep, dig deep and identify what is it going to take for me to move forward, either out of the situation or forward in my next situation. But it's an in, inner strength um, and it's requiring a relationship. And there's some humility that has to occur in order to get that strength. That's a, that's a paradox, right? In order for me to find the inner strength, it's, there's no ego in this card. It's completely about, I need to find the inner strength, which requires honesty and getting owning this stuff, which is the death card. And again, the death card does not necessarily mean a physical death. It means it's the death of karma, of um, behaviors, toxicity, thinking patterns. It's like an automatic change. I'm putting a, a stop to this and I'm starting this. Well, we all can say that, but these cards, the way it's being portrayed is it's actually occurring. This person is having a spiritual awakening and changing their belief system from the inside out. And that is the divine showing up. The chariot. This is my cancer card. Cancer. Love me some cancer. So cancer card. Uh, the chariot is uh, getting... So if you think about a chariot, right? There's two wheels. Two. Two wheels. Not like a motorcycle. Motorcycle have handlebars and brakes and everything. We have horses and two wheels and shoestrings guiding these crazy ass Mustangs 120 miles. Well, not really, but you know what I mean? As fast as they can go. And they better know where the hell they're going because you can't turn left. The whole cart will flip, horses will fly. It'll be a mess. But the chariot is on its way with a passion and direction intentionally going forward. That's this card. This energy is passionately going forward with a plan. Hangman. Right below the chariot is a hangman. Hangman is a state of, I have a new perception. So again, in Tarot, the hangman is a guy hanging upside down in a tree. It looks a little weird when you look at it, but when you understand the, the meaning of it, it's, it's, I'm gonna take a different look at this. If I look at it through the lens I've always looked at, kind of like the victim card, right, that we were talking about. If I'm a victim, I'm gonna keep carrying that in every single relationship and not ever get past it. If I don't get past it, I end up with the same damn ending every single time. So ladies, when you're like, why do I keep finding the same guy? Well, here we go. I have to look at it through a different lens with a different perception to say, okay, where am I at fault? And honestly, looking at that, honestly, that's hard because you gotta let go. You have to have some humility, get rid of the ego. I always say the ego is not my amigo. My ego is trying to kill me. You know, it always makes bad choices. Like, go ahead, you can eat that second cookie, 10th cookie, 15th, if it's an Oreo, it's like 30th, but that's another thing. So the, the um, hangman is this person, this energy, has identified some character traits they don't like and they see a pattern that they need to stop and the divine is showing up saying yeah you you it's going to require some strength you're going to have to let go of that addiction you're going to have to stop engaging in those friendships those toxic relationships where it's not serving you it is not serving you anything but heartache poverty negative mindset and it's going to hurt you 
long-term. It's in, it's a blockage to where I'm taking you because we all have a path, right? We all have a chapter in our story where, you know, we should have a plan if not us and then the divine does, right? And the divine is trying to show this person not on your plan. None of these characters are in the story. Gotta go. So the next one is uh, the devil card. The devil is uh, some in, in the Rider Waite tarot or tarot decks it shows this ugly massive thing with two human beings chained to each other um and similar to that i always see it as codependency you know the chains or it could be it could be chained it's usually addiction it's some, something that's holding us in hostage the irony in the cards is the chains are not tight they can wiggle out of them anytime they want so we always have the key to change our story not a victim if I have the key. So I have to release this as it doesn't serve me anymore. So this person um, that I'm reading for in the hangman to the devil card has done the work and identifies exactly what is jacking his life up or her life up and is stopping him or her from finishing the race that he needs to be on the path, get back on the path. Um, the two, the two of swords again, um, two of swords in the right away deck is a person sitting there with a blindfold on with two very, very long swords. They can't see anything. They can't see anything. And behind the, the depiction of that person with the swords is a ocean of water or a lake, a very large lake. And in tarot, water is emotion. So it's a balancing of emotion and you can't really see where you're going. You don't have all the information. You're completely trusting your divine, your intuition. You're just jumping, you're just jumping, which is um, the Ace of Swords is, is an honest conversation. The Ace of Swords is I'm coming in to have a truthful conversation, hearing the truth. Aces are beginnings, right? So they're going to, it's fresh starts. It's, I want to have a fresh start. That's what this card means, really. Or I want to have an honest conversation, but it's brand new. Um, and, and swords cut through the BS, man. It is solid. It is truthful. You can trust that card to be its truth. Nine of swords. The nine of swords is I'm almost ready <laughs> to drop the burden. Almost there. Ten is death, right? Ten is we're done, um, which is ironic, which is the next card next to the nine. So nine is I fought a good fight. And that's also the nine of wands. Um, but the 10 of swords is, is it's the final, again, in the right rate deck is a person who's laying face down in the dirt and there's 10 swords in their back. You cannot put another sword in the body dead. It is dead. So we'll have to clarify. Uh, but I get the sense that this, this person that I'm reading for um, is creeping its way. They know it's, they know it's almost dead, has a conversation. Oh yeah, it's dead. So that Ace of Swords is, I think it's dead. I think this isn't good for me, but they have a conversation and um, in that Ace of Swords and then we go to the Ten of Swords. All right, so it's over. So the final two cards paired up to each other is the Empress and the Emperor, divine counterparts, beautiful cards. So uh, if you're new to Tarot, the Empress um, are four queens and the Emperor are four kings. They are divine counterparts. Now, if I am an Empress and I have a king, probably not requited, they're missing or lacking several components because you have all four kings. So the Emperor is somebody who has financial stability, has a plan, is got their emotions in check. They are pretty stable. They can have conversations about relationships and not threatened. They're balanced, right? Same with same with her. There's no game. There's no. I mean, she's stable. She doesn't even really need an emperor. They're there to complement each other. They are full on their own accord. They don't need anything, but they do have everything within themselves. So therefore, they can give it to their partner as it enhances them. The partner doesn't need it to fulfill them. They are sharing because then it's requited. It's a balanced relationship. Otherwise, it's codependent a little bit. So mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, it's not good. So, which I feel like is what this person, this energy is realizing. They're having a, an epiphany saying, you know what? I have some toxic behaviors with some 
not so empress emperor humans and um i have i have to let go of some of this if i want to get my empress or the life i want spirit tell me give me some ideas give me some ideas about this reading how can i enhance this reading what words do you have that can give the reader or the, excuse me on the reader the the watcher some insight as to if this is them, if this is a loved one, if this is a family or friend. I'm going to give it one more shuffle and then I'm going to start pulling on myself on the top. They just like, don't want to come out. They just don't want to come out. Okay, so first out, distance. Hmm. You and your partner may be physically or emotionally distant. So I wish that would focus a little bit. My apology. So the distance card... It, it, I mean, I can't really define it because that's what it means. There, There is some, I feel like the Empress maybe is ahead of this and he wants to be the Emperor if or vice versa, whichever, however it suits you. But I feel like um, their goal, they have some work to do, but they know it's going to take a minute. It's not going to be, hi, I'm your Emperor. I want to partner with you on this great endeavor. Um there's some things to fix. Those are too many swords, right? There's an honest conversation. And I don't know if it's with this person or another person. I haven't gotten that figured out. I'm going to pull a different deck here in a minute, but I'm just going to pull a couple here. Is let go. Make room for the new beginning. It's on its way to you. And again, I love this. I love this let go card. So either it could be let go of the relationship, let go of Make some space, let go of resentment, let go of the toxicity or the behaviors. If I want something new and I'm praying I want this new thing, job, relationship, elevate me, well, then I got to do some work, right? I can't carry garbage from yesterday into the blessing of today. Can't do it. It won't work. It won't fit. It just doesn't fit. It's not going to fit. So I have to let go of it. I have to clear, my, I mean, call it clear your energy. But quite honestly, it's about reconciliation. And it not necessarily, and I'm sorry, it's a change of behavior. And the only way to reconcile is through improved behavior, improved intent, which is the next one is intuition, trusting your intuition. And this says the red flags you ignore now will come back to bite you later. Just saying. That is so true. I feel like that's what's happening here is that uh, there's quite a few um, behaviors, I feel. I mean, for the death card, to be there uh and the devil it's it's a spiritual awakening it's a spiritual shake-up for sure and it's not an overnight matter it should continue for our lifetime uh and so there's ego fear resentment frustration um i oh, okay and i think that yeah boat receiving what you need progression arriving moving on closure issues so there's you know there's some work that we do um, in relationships where we have to let go of parties, of people that don't serve us. You know, we leave playgrounds, we leave toxic things behind. If I want something better, I have to physically move out of the neighborhood I'm in. If I want, or buy the neighborhood and change it, <laughs> I guess. But I think it's usually the other way. I have to, I have to find a different place. If I don't like it there, I have to move. I have to pack a bag and leave. The last card is ascending. Transcending obstacles, learning, expansion, new phase, preparing for union. It's a great end. So I think that's that's the goal in any relationship is being a better version, the highest version, the highest vibrating version I can be for me. And if I am not that um, at that level, I'm going to... My dad, let me put it this way. My dad, we were raised in South Dakota, middle of nowhere I won't tell you the decade, I'm that old. But it was a long time, long time ago. So uh, he used to say weird stuff, like water seeks its own level. And I forgot, like, what what the hell are you talking about, water seeks its own level? I get it today. I get it today. Um, it's requited. So if I'm lower on the vibration scale, I'm going to be seeking out people that can resonate with drug addiction, pornography, toxic behavior, shit that doesn't serve me. I'm going to, I'm going to resonate because that, that's my comfort zone. I'm going to seek out those folks, right? 
If I'm not that person and I'm trying to elevate, I'm also going to seek those folks, the Sherpas of the world that have been there, done that. Healthy choices. I can't make it up. I'm just telling you. I love this. Uh, it says making healthy choices in love and in life, self-love, self-care, being happier. Boom, drop the mic. I think that's the key is that we, um, all of us, if you're watching this, there's a message, like I said, for you is taking five minutes, especially with the new year coming in. Even me, like the, my, my, I have a whole tribe of my own friends that I sit and we have an understanding of we are leaving this garbage in 2023, not going with us, leaving it on the curb. Garbage comes Monday, done, move on. Well, what does that look like, right? What, where do I want to be in 2023? And I can, that could be anything you want, but for me, it's some character characteristics within myself that I don't like that I need to let go of. Um, so I, I handed out journals this year. <laughs> that was my Christmas present. Very nice leather bound journals with a beautiful pen. And um, it's to identify, and we have work that we're gonna do to identify what we're gonna let go of and how we're gonna let go of it and what what is it gonna take because we all come at different chapters. Um, and what does that look like? For me, this is a lot of healing, believe it or not. The comments you leave me, um, it just moves me. I can't even believe it. I've only been doing this a week, swear to God. And I absolutely love this family. Um, you guys have been so supportive. But I do feel like this is the year. This is your year. Look at you. You're beautiful. You're smart. You're intelligent. You are very talented. You found me. So you're very intuitive and very insightful. So get that journal. Start writing. Just start writing. Find out what comes out. What is blocking me from elevating to my highest self? See what the hell comes out. It might shock you. It might be judgment of other people. It might be fear. I have fear of everything, so I don't open my mouth. I'd never get what I want. Well, because we don't open our mouth. So what am I going to do? I'm going to ask for what I want in a relationship, at my job. I'm not going to be afraid of conflict. Well, what does that look like? Start, start somewhere, right? And elevate to be the highest, most vibrating self that you can be. And you will watch your water change. You know, you'll watch the kind of people that will be drawn to you, like-minded, and the support team, your tribe. I think this is the year for you. Well, we'll see where this uh, journey goes. And again, I can't thank you enough. Keep the comments coming. I love you all. Uh, until we talk again, love and light.